Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. On Roku, the vanity code, one word, is Dwyer Boxing News. On iTunes, same thing, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Marcus Maidana's people have told the press that they're willing to fight Miguel Cotto at 154 pounds. Now, if that fight happens, I'll be leaning toward Miguel Cotto to win the fight. Let's talk about why. First, Marcus Maidana doesn't have experience at 154 pounds against elite competition. Right? Miguel Cotto, of course, is a former 154 pound champion who's now the champion at 160 pounds. Style wise, in my opinion, Marcus Maidana leaves his body open. He's not defensively gifted in terms of covering up his body. If you leave your body open against Miguel Cotto, whose left hook to the body is one of boxing's best punches, Good luck. You're going to get hurt, right? Let's remember, Amir Khan knocked Marcus Maidana down off of a body shot, right? Maidana got up, was able to survive. But if you look at that film, you're going to see when Maidana gets up, he's hurt. If you look at the Floyd Mayweather Marcus Maidana film, you're going to see May um, Floyd in front of him throwing straight rights to the body. I believe Miguel Cotto, who is shorter, right, would be able to fight small, right, a short guy with hand speed who can bend down is hard to find in the ring. And I believe as Maidana tried to find Cotto, Cotto would get inside and would destroy his midsection. Also, make no mistake, Miguel Cotto is not stationary like Adrian Broner. Right, Cotto is mobile, especially since he has gotten together. It's that kind of morning, folks. Especially since he has gotten together with Freddie Roach. Right, take a look at Cotto in the Delvin Rodriguez fight. Take a look at Cotto against Sergio Martinez. Right? In my opinion, Marcus Maidana doesn't do well against mobile opponents, right? His game is to come up on an immobile opponent like Adrian Broner and then to throw punches from odd angles, right? He wouldn't be able to set up shop against a guy who can constantly move like Miguel Cotto. So if that fight takes place, I'm going with Cotto. Let's talk about another development in sports. You know, Howard Weissman, um, an attorney, is big news. Understand, Weissman was OJ's attorney before, right, Johnny Cochran and Robert Shapiro got involved, right? I'm guessing Weissman talked with his client, saw the cuts on his hands, and realized that OJ might not be telling him the full story, right? When I first graduated from law school, Howard Weissman was so big, I believe I was interviewing with the firm, Weissman Bouncer, and to try to seal the deal, they actually introduced me to Howard Weissman. And I have to tell you, as I looked at Weissman, I was starstruck. At the time, he was one of the biggest attorneys in Southern California, right? Google him, look up his history, it's quite impressive. Well, understand he is now the attorney for Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who has announced to the press that he wants to fight Carl Frotch. Now, let's understand who both of these guys are, right? Chavez Jr. routinely puts up some of the biggest numbers commercially in the sport, whether he's on pay-per-view against people like Sergio Martinez or whether he's not on pay-per-view but on cable fighting people like Brian Vera. 
right? Chavez Jr., simply put, is one of the biggest cash cows in the sport of boxing. Understand, so too is Carl Frotch, right? Few people in the sport, and I mean very few, could sell out Wembley. Carl Frotch did so against George Groves, right? Let me point out, George Groves is a fine boxer. The reason for the box office on their fights is because it involved Carl Frotch. He's known. He's a big litmus test for any fighter. I have no doubt, I mean no doubt, that if Carl Frotch were to fight Chavez Jr. in any of a host of cities, right, including New York or Vegas, you're going to have a sellout. You're going to have a pay-per-view bonanza. Understand, too, the fight has some uncertainty because Carl Frotch is established at 168 pounds. Understand, Carl Frotch is a guy who has fought Mikael Kessler, Andre Ward, Lucien Boutte, Arthur Abraham. If you look at Carl Frotch's resume, you're going to see that he's a guy who has fought some of the biggest names in the sport. Jean Pascal, right? Carl Frotch is proven at 168 pounds. Chavez Jr. is not. A lot of Chavez Jr.'s accomplishments came at middleweight, not at 168 pounds. Also, it's a bit curious that Chavez Jr. was training with Freddie Roach and then Freddie Roach backed away from a guy who, quite frankly, is a financial bonanza. Now, why would a world-class trainer like Freddie Roach back away from a popular fighter? What I want you to do is to Google Freddie Roach's comments about how hard Chavez Jr. trained for his fight against Sergio Martinez. Understand that was a huge fight at the time. That was a middleweight unification fight. It was a big deal. And what you're going to find out is Freddie Roach, and Roach sometimes doesn't use Chavez Jr.'s name. What he'll do is he'll talk about how one of his fighters almost had Sergio Martinez out. But because that fighter only trained a handful of times for one of the biggest fights of his career, he wasn't in the condition to finish the job, right? If you read through the lines and if you track Freddie Roach fighters, you're going to realize that the only Freddie Roach fighter who had Sergio Martinez on the verge of getting knocked out was Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., now, if Chavez Jr. had motivational problems to train for a fight against Sergio Martinez, and if Chavez Jr., in my opinion, lost his first fight against Brian Vera, right, looked uninspired, looked lackluster, he looks like the kind of fighter who, quite frankly, can have off nights because of training issues, weight issues, whatever. And if you recall how the announced weight for the first Brian Vera, Chavez Jr. fight kept changing, right? Knowing that Chavez Jr. was the big name in that fight, right? Then you start to realize that Chavez Jr. is a guy who at times has tried to fight when he wasn't prepared, has gone through training camps uninspired, right, hasn't looked dazzling at 168 pounds, quite frankly. I thought he got a gift the first fight against Brian Vera. So this fight has a lot of intrigue. Let me also say, look at the Frotch-Andre Ward film. I believe Carl Frotch has a problem inside. I believe the Cobra is best when he's popping a jab. Think the last Kessler fight from the outside and he's able to put punches together right that's when Cobra's at his best Cobra's not at his best when some guy is leaning up on him 
trying to rake his mid cage from up close, like Chavez Jr. did to Sebastian Zvik. So from a boxing perspective, this fight is great. It has a lot of intrigue. From a financial perspective, right, this fight would be a blockbuster. Right? Both of these guys have earned multi-million dollar purses in the past. From a legal perspective, I know Chavez Jr. is having some issues with his promoter or past promoter, depending on your point of view. Just know that Chavez Jr. is well represented by Howard Weissman. Right? So keep an eye on the Carl Frotch Chavez Jr. developments, right? Part of it's legal. Part of it is from a simply boxing perspective, right? But that situation really should catch your eye because, quite frankly, the negotiations leading up to their possible fight are one of the biggest stories in boxing. Let me close with some comments on the upcoming heavyweight championship fight between one of the world's highest paid, best known, high profile fighters. Vladimir Klitschko, and he's fighting Kubrat Pulev. Right now, understand, right, for those of you looking at the big picture, Vladimir Klitschko is either about to be or has just become a father for the first time. Right, there are a group of gamblers out there who actually keep track of what's happening in an athlete's life to look for any type of information that might show that the athlete might be distracted. Right now, this fight has a red flag on it. These guys were supposed to fight a while back. But Vladimir Klitschko claimed that he had a biceps injury. Right? The Pulev people aren't buying it. They're claiming that if that injury was legitimate, then it would require more time out of the ring then Klitschko is getting, right? They feel that Klitschko wasn't ready for their guy. Now, let me say this. Whether Klitschko is distracted or not, in my opinion, only one guy in this fight has the power to end the show early. And that's Vladimir Klitschko. I believe this Vladimir Klitschko is different from the Vladimir Klitschko who ran out of gas against Ross Purity and who ran out of gas against Lehman Brewster. Right, the very disturbing fight in Klitschko's pass is that Brewster fight. Right, Klitschko at one point just falls down on the canvas. He's exhausted, right? He seems to have a lot of nerves, right? He seems stressed out. Understand, his big brother, Vlad... <sighs> Vlade Klitschko actually spoke with him, Vitaly Klitschko actually spoke with him about possibly quitting the sport. That's how bad it looked. Now it's my belief that Klitschko has gotten over his, what I believe, were anxiety attacks. Right? Klitschko right now looks to me to be one of the few heavyweights who can go 12 hard rounds. Right? I believe Klitschko has the advantage here against Pulev. I've made a pre-fight video already because Pulev doesn't fight inside. He's a jab and legs guy. He likes to hit you with a jab, then he likes to be outside. I thought he looked bad in the opening rounds against Tony Thompson. I thought the secret to the Ustinov fight was that Ustinov, quite frankly, doesn't have a great jab. Vladimir Klitschko has an excellent jab. Vladimir Klitschko has what I call long-range power. He's an athlete who can throw power shots from halfway across the ring. I believe Pulev is going to be there to get hit. I believe when Pulev backs away from most opponents, he's too far outside. You can't catch up with him. I believe Vladimir Klitschko has the height and reach and timing to do just that. 
right? I like Klitschko in this one. Just be aware of the fact that things are happening in Klitschko's life that some people are interpreting as him being distracted from the sport of boxing. Nonetheless, I think he beats Kubrat Pulev. Let me hear from you. If you have information you want to share with us about any of the fights or possible fights I've mentioned, I hope you do so in the comment section to this video. Let me just say, I'm not making a prediction right now on Frotch Chavez Jr. I'm one of those people who wants to figure out whether Chavez Jr. has trained for this fight before I make a, a prediction on the fight. One of the things that concerns me is the fact that Chavez Jr. has been out of the ring for some time. I have no doubt Carl Frotch is going to show up for the fight mentally and physically prepared because that's just who he is. Okay, so let me hear from you. Leave your thoughts for us here. Kodo Maidana, tell us what you think. Chavez Jr. Frotch, tell us what you think. Klitschko Pulev, tell us what you think in the comment section to this video and visit us at DwyerSportsBetting.com, GamblersAdvisory.com, and on my pay channel here on YouTube, Dwyer Sports Betting, one word. Thanks for stopping by.